of what we're gonna learn in this intro today is very, very close to um, something that Oscar Peterson might play. Let's see if we can hear that again. I'll mute some things here. Try this, see if you can hear that again. We'll try that again. That intro, let's see. Is this better? Yes. Again, we'll do it. We'll listen to it one more time. Can't listen to it enough. This is what kind of man are you? Let's check it out. What? Again, just straight church piano. So this is some really some old school gospel piano that we're going to be focusing on. But again, it's a lot of this is something you might hear someone like, as I said, Oscar Peterson or even Winton Kelly play some of the licks here. It's it's very, very blurred lines as far as these two styles, right, at this time. Um, but even present day gospel and jazz uh, uh, mix very, very well together with R&B and all sorts of other Black American music. So, all right, let's take a look at what we have here for this intro. So I'm going to bring up here, here's the original key, B flat. And so again, 12-8, and the notation looks a little busy because it's in 12-8 here, and so there's some 16 stuff, but it's very simple. Let's just take it slow. Two, three, four. good stuff. There's so, so much good stuff that we can apply to our own playing here. And really some great um, uh, music theory moments that, that can help us craft um, some nice cadences of our own if we want to. So let's break down what's happening here first from sort of an overview, right? So what are, what are the changes here? So it's just a simple intro where he's starting on the end of, or the, he, uh, it's one trip of the one triplet of beat four. So the four chord is the first chord. And we have this very gospel-y walk up from E flat to E diminished, right? The four to the sharp four diminished to one over five, right? So that that's how he starts. And it's big when he starts. Uh, so then this first lick here, after he lands on the one, right? The time comes in. So he's, he goes down the inversion. Again, it's all octaves based what he's doing to start. So it's really, really big. He's way down low here, octaves with his left hand, octaves with his right hand, and the chord filling it out. And then octaves there. So, okay, so we have our B flat over F, right? And then he comes down here to this very, very, uh, common sort of melodic device you hear Ray Charles use all the time. It's very common in gospel piano as well. Here off of the fifth, right? We're on the, we're on B flat. So based off of the fifth, you hear Ray do this all the time. Something like that, even on the one chord. And so he's going here between a B flat triad, right? With that fifth doubled on the outside to a C minor triad. So very common. device you hear in gospel and pop music and R&B. Then he does this uh, outlining of a B-flat major chord, right? Which is really, like that's, that is something that you would definitely hear like OP or Wynton Kelly play, something like that. Then we're on the two chord. Right? So here was a one, six, two, five in this first bar, right? It's on that G7, right? So he's just going back and forth between that. Again, that's a very Ray Charles melody. One, two. Then he plays this voicing here, right? This is a very, very common voice. You don't hear this in jazz so much, but it's really prevalent in a lot of 20th century Black American music, piano styles, and, and even classical music. Right? You have the sixth on bottom and a third on top. So you have an octave, but you have this third here. So it's not really this full big block chord with one hand. 
but it gives us this nice airy sound. So on the two chord. And then goes back to that outlining of that B flat triad, right? Got that crunch on the third and the fifth. And then a bluesy double stop here. To our one, right? And then this little walk up here, right? One, and then one over three, and then four, and then back to one. And then he goes back to our, our sixth shape here, is what we can call this, like our little hollow shape. Now check that out. So as we, we're, we land on our one here in the second half of that uh, second to last bar. So this this very last the very last eighth note here those should be E flats that's my bad it should be A diminished with E flat C should have re flatted those E flats but if you follow that chord change you can see that of course A diminished wouldn't have E naturals on there so it's G diminished A diminished come on Adam. But check that out. So knowing that's the case, what do we have here in this little walk down that ends this last cadence? This is so crucial here to our to our uh, endeavor uh, to the project of being better players are these little cadences so this walk up this is something that right that's a very basic right so what do we do to harmonize that there's some contrary motion there right on those outside notes What is going on there? That G diminished, right? That, that G diminished has a lot in common with, say, I don't know, a C7. And then we have an A diminished, right? Again, those E's should be flatted, which has a lot in common with an F7. So there's a little, there's a little hint at a 2-5 on this walk up, right? It could very well be <laughs> if you do a 2-5, C, uh, B flat, and then C7, F7, but with that bass movement. So now every time we, we wanna add a little bass movement there, right? like a little five to one movement, I want you to think about this. If I start with a melody in, in the fifth of the chord, I can move that down chromatically to the third in those triplets. Let's hear it again, let's hear Ray play it, and let's follow along to the music. That's really fast too, by the way. It sounds e like that sounds fairly easy to play, but as we'll see, that's to do all of those big chords and really get them hammered out is tough. So we need to get to work on this. We do, we need to get to work. Let's do it. We're gonna start very, very slowly. And let's just practice this. I've got a couple keys queued up. And again, my mistake here, that A diminished seven, the very second to last chord of the whole uh, example here, those should be E flats there. It should be a nice chromatic. It's always when you accidental something and then you don't re-accidental. You know what I'm saying? Does it make sense? All right, let's try it. Oh, by the way, if you like this kind of content, this is my very first video on Ray Charles or even anything that's really outside of straight ahead jazz. So if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button. Let me know that this is the kind of stuff you wanna learn, the gospel chords, the pop music, that kind of stuff. And then check out uh, our discount today. We always like to give you an option to go on a deeper dive and save a little money. $30 off my chord jazz chords for beginners if you are interested. So thanks everybody. Let's practice this, shall we? That's still a little fast. We want to get this. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to start very, very slowly here, right? Very, very slowly. So let's see if we can make this happen. That's good. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, let's practice it here. Play with me. Two, three, chip, split. Uh. Just a little bit. We're just going to keep inching it up until we can get close to raised tempo. Two, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, ah. Uh. Fun. So much good stuff going on there. Let's try it again. Two, three. Drip, blit, four. for Ray's articulation. We're still way under tempo here, but let's listen to his dynamics and how he phrases this and see if we can match up exactly. Okay, so we're not quite there at the tempo, but notice that at the end of every phrase, he really, he stabs at the note, so it's a, it's a bit short and it's a bit accented. So right from the top, So at the end of every phrase, those last notes are always short. That's one thing you can notice. Let's try it again here at this under tempo tempo. Two, three, trip, blit, ah. Uh. Hey. Let's try it again. Two, three, trip, blit. Four. Short. Short. Uh. One more time. Two. Three. Triple. Four. Mm. Try to keep going up here. It's tough though. You know, at a certain point, you just kind of have to throw your hands here at these shapes, trusting yourself that you're going to get them, right? Really have to, actually, we just did this masterclass and Fred Hirsch just mentioned like when you're nervous, the first thing to go is the ability to kind of jump and leave the keys. So let's practice kind of getting used to just going for it, right? Not, not trying to worry too much about it, but really just lifting our hands up, going for these big chords, seeing what we can do. Because as we get up in tempo, it gets, you really have to kind of, Go for it. Here we go. One trip, split, two trip, split, three trip, split, ah. you 
<laughs> One more time. Two, three, triplet, four. <laughs> How close are we here? How close are we to raise tempo? Let's hear it again. Not, not too far off. It's probably about here. Let's try it here. Let's see if we can get raised tempo. This will be fun. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. Three triplet four. Mm. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, as we say in the Midwest. Man, that's so nice. Okay, you know me though. Can't be just content here with this one key. I'm gonna take it to a couple more at least. What if we did this in F? We'll take it up. Taking it up, let's see what we got here. Mm. Well, for some reason, the, the F chart just worked out fine with the E diminished. Well, that's good. All right. Let's practice this. Let's go back down in tempo. We'll start slowly, of course. Really slow. Don't forget those articulations. Again, if you hear Ray do this, the end of every phrase is kind of stabbed short, right? Kind of accented short. He also starts the whole thing up. Just the first three notes are much, much louder than everything else. Really big, beautiful. And then just a nice chill after that. Let's try it together. One. Triplet, two, triplet, three, triplet, uh. Hey. <sighs> so nice. Again, so we have, we're starting on our four chord. All right, that four sharp four to the one, right? And then it's just a one, six, two, five, but that one is over, one is over the five, right? Like it's a F over C to the, to the, um, to the six, the six dominant, turn this off. And then these shapes, man, these are, we don't use these enough in straight ahead jazz, but these six with a third on top. So you have this octave with this third right near the top. harder in F than it is in B flat, like no doubt. Let's try it again. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, uh. kind of hard that tempo let's try right here a little little bit faster just a little bit faster two three trip blit uh big short 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 again i love love this last phrase here just from a cadence perspective, right? From a theory perspective, it's this. Like it's one of those kind of, it's also like a one, like a one, and then a two five, right? Oh, so 
great. Let's try it again. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. Uh. Keep going up here. Let's try it. Getting closer to the original tempo. Let's try it here. Two, three, triplet. Uh. Nice. Again. Two, three, triplet. Big. Short. Short. Okay, let's get to the real tempo here. Right about here, I think, is where Ray plays it. Dun, dun, dun. It's fast. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. <laughs> ah. All right, a little fast, a little fast. Try it again. Two, three, triplet. Uh. Mm. Let's try it again. One, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three. Ah. Uh. Mm. There it is. There it is. It's amazing those four clicks can add. Let's try it again. Two, three, triplet, four. Mm. Starting to run together, starting to run together. This is what happens though. This is why you transpose, because it exposes these things. Again, if you're digging this kind of content, this is my first go at something that's not so straight ahead or modern jazz-ish. So give me a like if this is what you like. And also check out our deal today on Jazz Chords for Beginners. You can save $30 off just by clicking that link. It just takes the price right off like magic. Okay, one more key. Whoa, whoa, I didn't even know you could do this. Wow, look at that. Okay, one more key. Key of C. Should be easy, but I don't know. So again, so we start on the four chord. We're in the key of C, so the four is F. And we do that four and that sharp four diminished to the one over five. C over G. And then we have another C triad, right, with that octave, and then a D minor triad. Very common gospel device. Church sound. Let's try it really slowly again. I like to start down here at about uh, 36. This is good. Right here. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Someone in the comments says, I know why he does it in B flat now. Yeah, totally. Like it's in, in these more uh, like white key friendlies keys, it's really, it's a lot harder. Let's try it again here in C. Two. And uh, four. I love it. All right, it's actually a lot slower, a lot harder, slower. Let's try it here at 42. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. Short. 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 Again, look, that's Ray's phrasing. Let's hear Ray's phrasing one more time. And this is a, this will be a different key. This will be a whole step down, but let's hear it again. Short. Short. I mean, he was even more short than I was. Like on the ace, on the 
the six chord. And on the five chord there at the end of that first full bar. Wow, okay, let's try it again. Let's try it right here. Two, triplet, three, triplet, four. Feels good. Lovely, lovely. Let's keep creeping up here. We're almost, we're almost at the tempo. Let's try it a couple more tempos in between. Two, one, triplet, four. Again, two, three, triplet, four. Let me try that again. Two, three, triplet, four. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get raised tempo up here about 52. As I do this too, again, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna make sure my hands get off, but I'm also gonna think kind of light here. We don't wanna get super, super heavy with this, right? We want it to still feel in control and light, just from a technical perspective, right? So I'm gonna think light here as I do this. Play with me. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, uh. Try it again. Two, three, triplet, four. Let's do it one more time and we got it. Two, three, triplet, four. Beautiful. Let's hear Ray's version one more time in the original key of B flat. Let me bring up the chart here so that we can all see what's going on too. Bam, bam. Here's Ray's version. Come on. Come on. What kind of man are you? That's so great. Isn't that great? So yeah, if y'all are into this and it seems like you are, I'll, uh, I'll break down some more uh, similar things like this that I, I find compelling. I think it's just fantastic. And I think, it, you know, like I said, there's so many blurred lines here between gospel, R&B, rhythm and blues, jazz, soul, funk, hip hop, that we can, uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's all coming from the same place. So we can apply it to whatever playing we want. Thank you so much for your practice today. So, so, so much fun. Again, if you like this, please click the like button and then check out our deal today. We'd love to give you a, a deal every time we practice, right? So uh, check out our $30 off jazz chords for beginners. There's some basic diminished in seventh chords in that course that are just like these, although it's not really in the same style, but you can really, if you don't know some of these shapes, they're there. So go check them out. Cool, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tortog. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Serge Wies. Thank you, Juan Pablo. Appreciate it. Austin. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Yao Ming. Thanks, Noriko. What's up, Piano Man? All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Uh, check out Peter Martin's Shelter in Place concert tonight over on Peter's YouTube channel. I got a feeling you'll hear at some point in the concert some something that is applicable to what we just practiced. Trust me. Cool, cool, cool. See y'all. Cheers. <laughs>